today. Today we will go over our three different type of trailers for over landing and our recommendations on each side for your Jeep over landing adventure. Stay turn on our video and share and like and most importantly please subscribe. Thanks for uh, joining us on the channel today. Uh, as the introduction stated, we're going to go through three different trailers for your jeeping needs and overlanding. We're going to start with this M1101 trailer. Uh, I bought this about eight years ago for 600 bucks. It was a steal, uh, and that's that's the primary reason I bought it. So it's a little breezy out here today. I hope uh, that doesn't interfere with our audio. Um, and we're going to give this trailer a quick overview. So these are primarily designed to pull. Uh, behind Humvees and other military type vehicles. They're extraordinarily sturdy. They have a steel frame and an aluminum body. This one's been converted to 12 volt lighting, which was fairly easy to do, and a four pin harness so I could pull it behind my JKU. That's a picture of the bed, and you can see that it's got 10 tie downs, full of leaves, but uh, that's what those circular things are. These are great trailers, very sturdy. Uh, I think they hold like 3,500 pounds. Um, they got like a 3,500 pound axle and they have a really beefy tongue. Um, one of the things with the tongue is it's hydraulic. So as you tap your brakes on your tow vehicle, the lunette uh, will uh, compress, activating the uh, brake fluid that'll go for each of the brakes and ensure that the trailer slows down for you. Uh, these are great trailers. However, the tongue weight on a JKU is rated at 350 pounds and I think these come in unloaded with about a 300 pound tongue weight. So they're extremely heavy. Uh, once again, empty. I think it weighs about 1,460 pounds. Uh, so that's a lot of dead weight just to, for an empty trailer. Uh, it does have two hand brakes, uh, parking brakes. And overall, once again, a really good trailer. So is it good for your Jeep? That's the question. And I'm saying it's not. It's just too much weight. Uh, it's 85 and a half inches wide, which is wider than your Jeep, which makes, I think it sticks out two or three inches on either side of the Jeep when you're pulling it. And that just becomes a big wind sail. Add that to the fact that it's 1,460 pounds empty weight. And then uh, you start to see that it's not really applicable for a lot of the applications that we as overlanders might want to have. So bearing that in mind, if you have a truck, this is a great trailer. Uh, I don't know. I don't even think a Gladiator would pull this as nicely as you'd want it to. The best benefit about these things is they're on the surplus market, pretty hot, so they're readily available. Uh, and once again, if you got a, a larger pickup, go for it. Great trailer. You got the oomph to pull it. Uh, no worries at all. Uh, however, for a Jeep application, not my top recommendation. All right, so this is, uh, for you returning folks, um, this is a trailer that you're probably familiar with. This is my M416 that I've modified it for our overlanding use. So um, kind of a rear view here. You can see the water cans that we carry. Uh, it's got a telescoping uh, rooftop tent rack on it with uh, LED lighting for campsites. It's got a CB antenna on it. Um, this one also has 35 inch tires with steel wheels uh, so I don't have to scare, carry a spare with my Jeep. Carry extra fuel cans. 
has an aluminum top. It's got a battery box and solar panel set up and an extended tongue. So once again, there's uh, other videos of this one on the channel, but this one tracks right behind the Jeep. It's easier to see once it's been built out for overlanding. So it tows extraordinarily nice. You can see there's a high lift jack mounted to it. That way I only have to carry one. Overall, a really great choice. Uh, suggest you modify an M416 for any of your off-roading needs. Uh, this is a much better trailer. I believe it's a half-ton trailer uh, for off-road, meaning it can carry 500 pounds. The empty weight uh, before any modifications are 670 pounds. Uh, and of course, once you start adding the steel for the rooftop rack, the tent, the battery box, etc., you're going to get up to about maybe a thousand pounds. Uh, and then, you know, you can kind of move on from there. But it, it holds plenty of stuff for overlanding, so I wouldn't worry about any weight limitations there. This is our third trailer that we're going to do a brief overview about. This was my second M416 trailer. So this one's been highly modified. You can see it doesn't look anything like the, the overlanding trailer. What I did with this one was I, uh, I cut it, the body in half, extended the frame, and uh, made it with the same width as the JKU that's going to be pulling it. Uh, because this, the M416s, if they don't have a rooftop rack or anything on them, they're hard to see uh, in your rear view mirrors. So I wanted the extra space and capacity. So I went ahead and cut it. I used part of the tailgate uh, to patch the front panel behind the box. So it gave me the extension as far as the width that I wanted. The wheel wells are fenders from Harbor Freight that were uh, put in and I used part of the uh, the trailer that I cut out for that there's a whole series of videos on this on the channel on this build I think there's three different videos of the overall build the tailgate that I used is a surplus M1101 tailgate it's all aluminum and when I was able to widen the body of the trailer in the frame I was able to then go ahead and utilize an M1101 tailgate and it works great okay so my bottom line recommendation is the trailer on the left any four uh, excuse me any M416 trailer is going to beat the daylight out of the M1101 the M1101 great trailer for its purpose and needs Throw it out of a C-130, it's gonna, it's gonna survive. We don't need that kind of stuff. We don't need the 300 pound wheels. We don't need the, you know, the heavy duty that this thing's been built for. The extra weight of the uh, M1101 is its main uh, factor uh, to consider. Let's walk up here a little closer to the M1101 and let's talk about some of the difficulties in modifying one. If we get up here and we look towards the light, the running light, we're gonna see these fasteners. This is how this entire trailer is put together. That's a special type of fastener that I don't have the name for. I'll try and look it up, put it in the uh, description. Uh, but the, <laughs> it's not like you unbolt this thing or can cut it and do this, that, or the other thing with it. These are all special connectors or special tools they are not rivets, they're a type of rivet. And uh, if you're gonna try and modify this, they like make, make it more narrow or something, or you know, try and lighten it, it's just not worth the effort when you can go out and look at an M416, pay a little extra for it, because uh, they are getting a little rare and they are becoming a little more expensive but you can still find them for 1500 bucks or so. Uh, that's a much easier option to work with. 
Uh, you don't have to worry about some of the uh, potential risks with modifying them because this is basically just steel and bolts. Uh, figure out what you want to do with it and then go to town. Uh, whereas the M1101 is just too hard to try and modify for our needs. So that's my recommendation. Go find an M416, pay a little, little extra for it. The advantages of an M1101 is they're available right now by a surplus, but you know, you're gonna buy one like I did and then say, oh, it's too heavy to pull. You know, I don't want to go off target with it and have it, uh, you know, put too much of strain on the transmission of the Jeep or anything like that. Based on our video, and share and like and most importantly please subscribe